Hi everyone, this is Southern Bell 74 and this is a health and wellness news pop-up. I just wanted to do an update on three of these entertainers. The first one will be Albie Shore, who is recovering from a coma. Then we'll talk about Al Roker, who is recovering from being hospitalized twice for blood clots. And last but certainly not least, comedian and actor Mr. Sinbad, who has recovered from a stroke. All right, guys, tune in. There'll be some news clips to follow. And let me know how you feel about these stories in the comment section. Take care and continue to tune in to Southern Bell 74 as I give you news that you can use. Al B. Sure is known as the ambassador of New Jack Swing and R&B. He toured the world and won lots of awards, but in the blink of an eye, it was almost all taken away. When he got sick, he fell into a coma. Now for the first time in an exclusive interview with Crystal Young, he's talking about his health, his career, his legacy. Crystal, what was it like? Wow, he was so authentic, so genuine. Whether you remember him from the late 80s, early 90s, or from now, he is a singer and has always been known as a humble, nice guy. Well, he had a catastrophic medical emergency, but he is back. He is recovering. He's getting stronger. And he's also talking to me. So please take a look. He credits his mom for instilling in him not only a love of music, but also a strong work ethic. Imagine telling a single mother three forms of public transportation. Yeah, I'm making an album. I'm making some music. Okay, make sure you're in the house at this time before the street light, what have you, so on and so forth. No, I'm, I'm in the basement making music. She's like, okay, fantastic. So I spent many nights locked out. So it's the discipline factor yeah, yeah, yeah. of, you know, being on time, following through. It was his mother who took him to his first concert, the King of Pop, at Madison Square Garden. She said when Michael came out on stage, I stood there oh. and tears just started, and I froze. She said I couldn't move. She would try to shake me, and I was like... Wow, wow, wow. It's Michael. As a kid, Al mimicked entertainers he admired like the legendary Tom Jones. I used to religiously watch Tom Jones and try to mimic. It's not <laughs> unusual well, to be loved by anyone. He became close friends with David Bowie, who he says taught him how to ski, and Michael Jackson, who called him the heir apparent. He was at the height of his game. Just imagine... You know, people putting you on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. Who's the easiest person to shoot at? Mm -hmm. The highest point. Mm -hmm. Clear, clear target. Mm -hmm. um, so in every aspect of it, um, I'm just glad that there was no uh, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram <laughs> during the Any Heartbreak Tour. And imagine Suge Knight was the head of my security and me and Bobby Brown and Mike Tyson are running around everywhere and having a great time and enjoying life. That um, sounds like a group right there. Oh, oh I'm trying Bobby to... Brown and Mike Tyson. I'm... All right, that sounds like you could get into some trouble capital No, tea. no, this is good trouble. This, <laughs> oh, it's, oh, good, it's good trouble. No, but you know oh, what that it was? Kind. But okay. it was, you know, because it was a brotherhood. But eventually, with success, came excess and Al began to gain weight. As time progresses, your life changes, your lifestyle changes, mm -hmm. more steak dinners, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> more late nights in the studio. We with with the, all the trimmings. After a while, the lifestyle changes and the metabolism does as well. It was one of his mentors, Quincy Jones, who inspired him to lose the weight. He cares, you know, he was yeah. really says, hey man, yeah. I need you to live, man, you got stuff to do. Right. You have, right. you have things to, to accomplish right. and things to do, but we need you around to do them. So, you know, get, you, get your act together. He got bariatric surgery, began to look and feel better, then earlier this year had a medical emergency when he was rushed to the hospital after collapsing while working on new music. He called one of his closest friends for help. Eddie F is standing above me. I'm in a wheelchair, and he's talking to security. He had me hidden in the corner, and I'm in an emergency room. And then I remember... Um, him embracing me, putting me in his Escalade or whatever, and, and, and moving me. And I just remember, those are the vague things that I remember. And wind up being in a hospital somewhere. This is in July 2022, and then it was October. In a coma for two months, Al was close to death. I was intubated, I was on a ventilator, had a tracheotomy. Um, I mean, there was so many things going on to the point where they were considering 
sending me to hospice. And what people don't truly understand unless you've been through this type of medical journey is taking for granted breathing, mm. tying your shoes, speaking. As details of his health crisis began to surface, he received calls and letters from all over the world. Keep your spirit right. Know that we're praying for you. We love you. And everything is in God's hand. And all of my amazing, you know, industry colleagues and friends and you know, everybody from, you know, Snoop and Halle Berry and just, you know, every, everybody's been reaching out to send love, prayers. One of the most memorable, his recent letter from Vice President Kamala Harris. Receiving this beautiful, beautiful uh, piece of mail from the White House. Nice. Uh, yeah, 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 uh, from the Vice President. Nice. And, uh, Wait, so it was from Kamala? Yes. Okay. Yes, Saying what? I heard your back. <laughs> yeah, he's back. It tells the story of racism like you've never seen on screen before. How Al Sharpton rose. Al has slowed down but still making great strides. He recently narrated the national radio commercial spots for Reverend Al Sharpton's documentary, Loudmouth. Although he's on the road to recovery, his body bears the scars of his medical trauma. I have what's called a chevron, and that's when they cut your chest open, which is probably the first time I'm actually talking talking about it, um, uh, I'm the recipient of an amazing, blessed new liver. Um, and, the um, liver is a workhorse in your liver, body. Oh, absolutely. 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 And, um, you know, and I'm going to treat it well. As Al looks forward, he's writing a book about his life. So the working title has been From Mount Vernon to the Moon and Back. I like it. And yes, like new it. music. It's going to be an adult formula, obviously, yeah, and yeah. chock full of telling the story Yeah. Um, with a new Jack sexy type of groove to it. Al's legacy is about music and family. He's super close to his three sons. And if I can influence or help or inspire mm -hmm. someone else, I did my job. And, and, and if my sons and my grandson are smiling and say, hey, that's my pop pops, you know, <laughs> then I'm okay. I'm, I, I think I did my job, you know, just as long as I make them proud. I'll be sure is a survivor, his life characterized by high highs and low lows. He's faced extreme challenges, stared down death, and he's still here to tell his own story. We all know in life that health is real wealth. I think you would agree with that at this point. You Absolutely, know, If you are healthy, if you are feeling good, you are 98% there. Just continued success in all you do. And just in case you were wondering, the moves, he still got them. <laughs> Outside of that? Wait, 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 wait. I might can do that because that Boom. just seems like it's a lot of shoulders. Is it? That's it, a lot of shoulders. And it's good for me to stretch at this age. You got a good heart and that comes through, so you're Thank good. You so all much. right. Part two. Part two. All right. Let's update our software. Okay. <laughs> I cool. love that. Updated software. Bing! Let's hit the button. That's Thank cool. you, love. Thank, Thank you, dear. I appreciate you. Blessings. Well, Al B. Shore talked a lot about being hospitalized and how important it is to have an advocate. And I think if you've ever had a close relative in the hospital, mm -hmm. you know that you have to have someone that's fighting for you, that's talking to doctors. He said a really good friend of his when they were going to put in the tracheotomy and they literally cut your neck open, said, wait a minute, this guy, his moneymaker is his voice. Wow. Please be careful. Please watch right. where you cut and what you right. do. And the hospital was very very careful. The voice is fully coming back. Oh, thank goodness. And, and he just sounds amazing. And he's just humble and easy and friendly. And I really, really wanted to hug him hard. And I was like, okay, wait, no, he's, he's still, still recovering. recovering. <laughs> Don't like, can't, Keep can't, your hands careful off. on the hugs. But he's a good guy. He has a big social media following. It's official, I'll be sure. And um, he's got new music and it's going to drop next year. Oh, uh, can't wait. And I'm, I'm happy that he's on the news. I know. I yeah. know. Yeah. Okay. It was a long time sick, but he's coming back. Thank you. You're welcome. They're playing a song. Welcome back. You guys know Al's been under the weather. We are so happy to announce Al is back home yes. from the hospital, sitting in his kitchen. Al. Thank oh. you, guys. Thank you. Oh. It's, 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 it's good to be home. It's good to see your faces. Wow. We miss you so much, yeah, Al. You don't I, get it. I mean, we miss you. The crowd yes. misses you. Yeah. There's not a day we don't go out there that people aren't holding signs. Where's Al? Yeah. We want Al. How are people? How are you feeling? How are you doing? Well, it's just good to be home, you know, surrounded by, you know, Deborah and Courtney and Leela. Nick's going to be home from college 
uh, very soon. Uh, my brother Chris and his wife have been hanging out, and 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 you guys have been uh, terrific. Coming by, you were coming by the hospital. Hoda was actually, I think, named a, an honorary doctor. She was just <laughs> literally show up. You know, just she did a Houdini. You know, she just be there. These are not the drones you're looking for. <laughs> Pay no attention. I'm not a member of the staff. Uh, but uh, but it, it's it's. Listen, it's been a tough slog. I'm not going to. I'm not going to no. uh, deny this. This has been the hardest one yet, and you know, I've had my share of surgery. <laughs> but uh, uh, it, it gives you a uh, a profound sense of gratitude uh, for mm. this outpouring of prayers and thanks. Mm. And uh, I'm I'm a very uh, fortunate person. Yeah, yeah, you are, Al. Um, so tell us what the doctors are saying about your you coming back because I look at you. You look dynamite, yeah. but you need time to heal. Yeah, you know, you you lose uh, a certain amount of muscle mass, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for every week you're in the hospital. And I was in the hospital for four weeks, mm -hmm. so you know, it, it's there's just a certain amount of weakness that I'm doing physical therapy every day, uh, uh, occupational therapy. I've, I've got to just get my strength back. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, in, in the meantime, and in the meantime, yeah, I was thinking of in January about having a knee replaced. <laughs> I've got to push that back. So you know, I've got a number of, of issues, but. Yeah, I feel good. I feel strong, and and every day I feel a little bit better. I made dinner last night, and of course you uh, did. Of course I, you did. I, I just I just feel like yeah, there's going to be a little bit of a slog, but there are a lot of people uh, who have to deal with a lot more with a lot fewer resources. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, I'm I'm very fortunate and very blessed to to be able to have the resources I've had. A team led by Dr. J. Rahman, and uh, uh, it's it's been uh, and and all the wonderful nurses and medical staff at New York Presbyterian mm -hmm. Hospital. They yes. were just mm -hmm. terrific. Uh, so I just, I got a lot of things and people to be thankful for. But well, least you have of such all, an amazing... Uh, you, you, our family, our Today mm -hmm. Show family. Well, you have, I mean, you have such an amazing attitude for the for the whole thing. We come see you, it's like mm -hmm. Al is still smiling, <laughs> yeah. still making a joke. Yeah. And can we just give a shout out to Deborah, Deborah. Deborah. Robert, Deborah. your beautiful wife, Leela, Courtney, mm -hmm. Nick. But Deborah, I mean, she is a warrior. Mm -hmm. She loves you, Al. Yes. and has kept us all up to date yes. as well. Yes. So yeah. I, I know you. What's, what's been great, you know, when the doctors come in, her journalistic chops, uh, he'll go, uh, so do you have any questions? And she whips out a list of about 20 <laughs> questions. Uh, and then the doctor says, uh, you? Uh, no, pretty much. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> she asked all my, you look yeah. great, buddy. Yeah, you we look love great. you. You sound Al. great. We, we can't, can't wait. wait. We, we can't you. wait, Everyone babe. Does. Mwah, love you. Keep love the mustache. You. Keep the stash. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that, was like it. that was fantastic. <laughs> Love you, Al. We'll see you soon, Al. <laughs> <laughs> That's our it's, out. It's uh, amazing just how many Oswego shirts he has. Oh, I know, I it's know. true. That's important. <laughs> oh. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or Click the link right here. We start with Kevin Frazier at Madame Tussauds New York in Times Square with an update on beloved comedian Sinbad, Kev. Yeah, Nichelle, you know, Sinbad had a stroke two years ago and is learning to walk again. Now his family and close friends are revealing the extent of the damage and his long road to recovery. I never go through that woe was me. You can turn your life around like this. What is his condition right now? He's in the process of rehabbing, learning to, to walk and talk, learning to enunciate words and, and get his mobility back. I spoke exclusively today with Simbad's longtime friend, Phyllis Johnson, after his family released these heartbreaking photos of his secret struggle. The 66-year-old was given a 30% chance of survival. Well, we see him in the hospital on a ventilator. We see him working with the walker at physical rehab center. Was there concern that he might not make it? Yeah, I think I think that's a concern that everybody had. Now he's just, he's on the road to recovery. Why did he decide to tell fans about the condition now? I think, you know, Sinbad's very private. He just wanted to wait until he was ready to be at a place and time where he felt comfortable explaining. Simbad's family set up a website asking for donations, quote, the costs of therapy far exceed what insurance covers. He had a smooth looking brother at the helm.
The star showed signs of the stroke in his last TV appearance on the Donald Glover-led comedy Atlanta. The episode aired just four weeks ago. Doing comedy was always crucial to him. It's just like medicine. It keeps me going every day, and I can look at the, the stupid side of anything. And I think it keeps everything perspective to me that nothing is really that serious. The beloved comedian has weathered financial difficulties before, filing for bankruptcy in 2009 and in 2013. I lost something, my life savings was like $4 million. It was all good. Money is made every day. It's your job to go out and get it. His family is now leading that fight, along with the donation website. They're also allowing fans to purchase Simbad's first ever collectible action figure. Proceeds go towards his recovery. There's always a risk of another stroke. Dr. Shelby Halsey, a stroke recovery expert not involved in Simbad's case, tells us comprehensive aftercare is vital. It's going to be a bit challenging, not only the physical, but the emotional. But someone who is extremely motivated, that definitely helps. He's a fighter, and he has all the right people around him. His yeah. wife, Meredith, his children, he's taken all the right steps as far as physical therapy, diet, and everything to keep, make sure that he's ready to go when he steps back out there. He's not giving up.